Hello and welcome to day one of our Advent calendar devotions. My name is Esther and our title today is Meeting Mary and Joseph and the reading is from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. An angel promises the birth of Jesus to Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now this is the beginning of one of the most well-known stories in history and across the world, and one you've likely heard many times. I'd like to focus on something I've previously underestimated, taken it for granted, and that's looking into the reaction, the feelings of Mary and Joseph and really appreciating the human emotions and the geographical and societal context at that time. I find it interesting that what's revealed to us in these verses sets a scene of very humble beginnings and the stark contrast that has with the significance of what Mary is facing. This is the introduction to the woman that would give birth to the child that would be our Lord and Saviour, the creation of Christianity. Mary was confronted with an angel of the Lord. What a truly incredible and awe-inspiring moment, a moment that's really quite difficult to imagine, let alone relate to. These verses tell us the location of where Gabriel appeared before Mary. Nazareth was Mary and Joseph's hometown and was interestingly known for its independence and aloof attitude. It was located on a major trade route and a long way from Jerusalem, Jerusalem being the centre of Jewish life and worship. Historical accounts describe Mary as young, likely a teenager, innocent, unassuming or inconsequential even. She was also poor and female, which was particularly relevant to the culture at the time. These characteristics would have labelled her as unusable by God for any major task. God did not send Gabriel to a king or high priest nor to Jerusalem, as would have been expected at the time, he sent Gabriel to Mary in Nazareth. Joseph actually had very little written about him in the Bible, but we do know that he obeyed the Lord without question during this time. Just for a moment, imagine how you might react to your virgin fiancé sharing with you the magnitude of carrying and delivering the Son of God then envisage what that meant in terms of being the foster father of Jesus Christ. Earlier in the first chapter of Luke is the account of Zachariah and Elizabeth's conception. They had been unable to conceive throughout their long married lives together, and at this point were both older in years than biology would usually allow for childbearing. But God's plans were of course greater than they could have ever anticipated. The angel Gabriel appeared three times in the Bible that we know of, first to Daniel, and then not long before he spoke to Mary, Gabriel prophesied to Zechariah that Elizabeth would give birth to a son, later known as John the Baptist. What a miracle. I wonder if these earlier encounters were in preparation for Mary's belief, her faith in the enormity of what she was being asked to do, both Daniel and Zechariah were described as startled and terrified when Gabriel appeared to them. Who wouldn't be? God spoke to Mary also through Gabriel and bestowed upon her one of the most important acts of obedience he has ever expected of anyone. Consider the shock, the honour and what a tremendous amount of responsibility that was for Mary. Remember, this wasn't a time where they had the luxury of modern medicine, skilled midwives or established testing equipment and facilities. What I take from this is that when you might feel that your ability, your experience, your upbringing, your education, your environment or your circumstances in general, if you feel they might limit you from being a candidate to carry out God's work, just spare a thought for Mary and Joseph and the thoughts and emotions they were contending with. Let's not limit our ability. Let us open our hearts and our minds. Let's demonstrate our faith and trust in him because we can serve him in ways we never expected were possible. And this story demonstrates the scale of the miracles that are possible. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Rejoice.
Thank you.